Special counsel Robert Mueller is ratcheting up his focus on Paul Manafort. His team just subpoenaed bank records from Trump's former campaign manager, and that was on the heels of the FBI raid of Manafort's Northern Virginia home. That happened right after Manafort spoke with Senate Intelligence Committee investigators. One of President Trump's lawyers, John Dowd, says the raid was a gross abuse of power and something we'd normally see in Russia, not America. Fired National Security Advisor Michael Flynn also getting a lot of attention from the Mueller team. Investigators have asked the White House for documents related to Flynn, and they've also questioned people about whether Flynn was secretly paid by the Turkish government during the presidential campaign. That expands the probe into Flynn beyond just Russia. For more on this, we are joined by former federal prosecutor Roland Riopel. Thanks for a few minutes, Roland. It's a pleasure to be here, Andrew. So the FBI raids Manafort's home just after he's interviewed by the Senate Intelligence Committee's investigators. Is there any conclusion we can draw from that timing? I think a very fair inference is that uh, there must have been some form of documentation mentioned by Manafort in his interview with the Senate that Mr. Mueller's team was afraid a, might be destroyed or disposed of, and that they suspected, B, was some piece of evidence that they themselves had requested from Manafort and that he had refused to produce. Because you see, if Manafort was holding evidence that he had not produced, despite a request from Mueller, then uh, they know that he would be likely to destroy it if subpoenaed for it and therefore they went for the full-blown search warrant with no knock in the middle of the night, uh, went right into the house to get that evidence. Now it's possible that Manafort may have thrown that evidence away in the brief period between his testimony and the time that the no-knock warrant came, but if that happened, that's an obstruction of justice. You so know, I think either way, they've got Manafort dead to rights. We're talking about bank records for Manafort. That could cover any range of, of issues or details. Any idea, any guesses as to what they might be looking for in those records? Uh, I'm sure they're looking for money laundering type uh, behavior with the Russian oligarchs. Remember that Mr. Trump has had uh, many transactions with these Russian oligarchs over the years, some of them highly suspicious. I am sure that they are looking for similar type transactions with Manafort and want to examine his relationship to those Russians. And I think another reason that Mr. Mueller was so anxious to get these records is, as I understand it, many of them relate to offshore accounts. It can take months or years to get those records through ordinary legal process if you can get them at all. So this is hot stuff that, that uh, Mr. Mueller wanted to get right away. And by doing the search warrant, he's uh, taken the shortest point, uh, shortest line between two points and cut down the time of the investigation, perhaps significantly. Roland, if some of those bank records from Manafort predate Manafort's involvement with Trump and with the Trump campaign, is it possible that they're looking for non-campaign related charges and looking to use that as leverage to potentially flip Paul Manafort? That's possible. That's entirely possible. But keep in mind, Andrew, the whole focus of the Mueller investigation is the relationship between Russia and the Trump campaign. And Manafort, who has had many, many years of relationship to Russia, he may have been, it may be the theory of Mueller's uh, team at this point, that Manafort was effectively Russia's man on the Trump campaign. And if that's the theory, then Manafort's relationship to the Russians going back for years is relevant to investigate. Let's shift over to Michael Flynn for, for a second. The special counsel is asking the White House for records about Flynn, reportedly the first request of the White House from the Mueller team. This is about Flynn's work with the Turkish government or for the Turkish government during the campaign. Any added significance to that being the first request of the Mueller team to the White House? Uh, yes. You see, I think what's happening there and, and again, this is just me putting on my old federal prosecutor hat and, and taking my best guess from reading the tea leaves. But my best guess as to what's happening there is that um, Mr. Mueller is trying to find out what Mr. Flynn told the White House about his relationship to Turkey, if he told them anything. It would have been standard practice at the Trump White House if they acted like a normal White House, always a big if, but they would ask 
Flynn, what are your relationships to foreign entities? That would have been asked by a member of the executive branch. If Flynn concealed that evidence or that fact from the Trump White House, that itself would be a crime. It's a very simple one to show, and uh, Mueller may be looking to make that one quickly. Which of the two do you think is the bigger concern, the, the potentially catastrophic uh, witness against the White House, Manafort or Flynn? Manafort. Why? Uh, Manafort, no question, because he has a far deeper, far deeper uh, relationship to the Russians. He appears to have been a, a far more troubled person in terms of his own finances, and therefore it appears to me uh, much more likely that he was Putin's man on Trump's team. And if that's so, that's a terrifying thing for all of us, and particularly for Mr. Trump. We've also heard that the Mueller team is looking at Trump's personal finances, again, predating his time as a candidate. Critics, of course, are saying that's not in the scope of the Russia investigation. It doesn't have anything to do with Russia. How would you counter critics who say that should be out of bounds? Oh, that's absolutely in bounds. Um, Mr. Trump's relationship with Russia goes way back before the campaign and is very deep, uh, as we know from the statements made by his uh, son, Eric, and others. Uh, so his relationship to Russians and his financial transactions with them going back over many years are relevant to find out how much influence those Russians may have had in connection with Mr. Trump's campaign. Very important evidence to gather. It'll take a long time, but it's clearly well within the scope of Mr. Mueller's uh, investigation. Finally, Roland, the president has said any look into my personal finances would cross a red line. Short of firing Bob Mueller, is there anything that Trump and his team can do to either stop or alter or delay Mueller? I don't think so. I think that Mr. Mueller clearly has been given his head. He is afraid, he is uh, allowed to go ahead with all deliberate speed, and he is doing that. Um, and I don't think Mr. Trump has, Mr. Trump has two choices. He can cooperate, as he claims that he is doing, and allow the investigation to continue and conclude, and it may be at the end of that process, Mr. Mueller will say there's a lot of smoke and no fire, or he can try to derail it in some way, fire Mr. Mueller, and hope that his own personal popularity will somehow save him from impeachment. That's a possibility, and I think that is actually his strategy. I believe he will fire Mr. Mueller. I believe he will rely on the fact that he is still beloved by a significant chunk of the Republican Party and hope that that will block the impeachment proceedings, which may well come if he does fire Mr. Mueller. Uh, it feels like we're at chapter three of a story that we don't know how many chapters it has, but no doubt we'll have you back to. Uh, oh, yes. No doubt we'll have you back to analyze oh, those chapters. I can't as wait to turn the page. <laughs> I can't wait to turn the page, Andrew. <laughs> Roland Riefel, former U.S. attorney. Thank you, as always, Roland. Appreciate it. Uh, pleasure to be with you. Pleasure to be with you. And up next, they need each other to get anything done, but instead of working together, they're working against each other by criticizing each other. Why would President Trump pick a fight with one of the leaders of his own party? We'll ask that question next.